So the point is, my point, when you're talking about society and you're doing something, you're entering into a new set of relations. You believe that you will get a diploma from some big state. You will get a new set of relations. Okay? So, if you want, uh, if, you, if you take Sigmund Freud, for example, he also understood society as a different set of uh, psychological or anti-psychological uh, or different kind of theoretical and methodological foundations. That's, that's the point. Okay? Other concerns? Questions? understand this and who will agree with this or that notion. Society is a notion of the term or scientific scientific category. You want a philosophical category at least. That can be interpreted differently. Why? Have you seen that what I said? Human being or human different rationality, emotions, different natures, different nature and culture. And different time in history. Human beings that have been that uh, have been populated Earth two thousand years ago. And today, slightly different, right? They can interpret differently what is love, what is marriage, what is everything that belongs to emotional sphere, as well as the rationale. So, sociology, it's a science that didn't exist forever. It's a science that was developed back in the mid 19th century. Mid 19th century. Yet, society as well as science has been flourishing for centuries before the appearance of the sociology as a science or as a discipline or as something that rose questions and that very important word question Questions with question marks. <laughs> that what strikes people. Ah, look over there. You see this lightning? Molly? You see this thunderstorm? Grump. Why? What? Or what? Why? Questions. I tried to go hunting today and I missed. I didn't bring anything. My family dies. Why? Why I missed?
you can answer to this question differently. Again, you can answer this question based on rationality or based on logic. I was drunk and I missed with an error. Or somebody up there said, no way that you get something today. That's not logical, that's emotional. Based on myth, based on irrationality. So you can say that human being is both rational and irrational as well. Carnival. Well, people, carnival. Carnival, that's something that makes human beings not really crazy, irrational. The fact of the matter, shopping, not buying, shopping. What exactly means shopping? You don't need it, you go shopping. Just go and buy something, what do you need? No, you don't need it. Anything, but you go shopping. And what, what are you doing over there? That's irrational. You don't need it, yet you buy. Definitely you try to explain using rational terms. And this event, as, Sophie, as, as, as uh, shopping turned, turned out to be. Yet, for my money, it's completely rational. Okay, once again, sociology appears or has been developed here. It's not really in one point. You can say in one point with the term sociology appeared in public, in, uh, when it was published. You put it 1838 or 1842 or uh, so, but that's again five, six, eight years when the Cours de la Philosophie Positive has been published. <coughs> okay, mid 19th century. <coughs> How about here? There was a sign, yeah. There was science, definitely I said, 17th, 18th century. That's the modern times. The first of modern times. I would say Galileo Galilei's theories, 1632, 1634. That's the birth, birth of modern science. Differenziale integrale e scissione, that's back in the 17th, 18th century. It's not today. I'm talking about science, not technology. Uh, okay, so there was science, at least. There were questions. About what? About society. And how do they call it at the time? But before 17 was ancient Greece as well. The fifth, so the, the, the century, the pericles, pericles century, or even earlier, before Christ, definitely. So the weak questions, what is human being? What is society supposed to be about? What is nature? What is culture? How to behave practically? How to live in a society? And over there at the time, it was not uh, <coughs> how to live. That's not really an exact term. But how to? That's the, the must. How one must live. How one the, the mandatory behavior. 
That was the essence of understanding society. But sociology appears here with a question how, in reality, how it was, how to, or how must one live, and how in reality. What are the practical outcomes, results of one's behavior? How one hurts another person. Relates. How? So, so-called positive question. Positive. Without questions like why, like essence. I don't care what is the essence of a society. I want to know how society works. I'm a sociologist. I'm not a philosopher. That's the line of arguments back in the mid-19th century. We do not need philosophy. We don't need something that brings us to the essence. We need to get up to something positive. The only thing is, what appears really interesting, and I told you last time, what did I, what did I, one very important thing, when science becomes science, specifically in the social uh, dimension, or social dimension. What one crucial word to notion? When it appears, it appears uh, scientific or method. Method. That's the word. Method. And I told also about two lines, or two understanding of methods, rationalities. Hegel, and Hermetica, Carthesian. about sociology, you need to get what kind of questions sociologists, sociologists ask. And that's real positive questions about how society works. Sociologists, if you're a sociologist, you need to know something about it. That was back in the 90s. This still is the, if you want, mainstream tradition. Yet, there are a bunch of other questions that sociology asks, and they, try, they are trying to come to questions close to why. So, my point here, basic thing, questions, definitely methods, understood 
That's what? And here's the trick. Either you stick, definitely this is the rational tradition in understanding what is math. Yet you might have different, different stuff. Including the differentiation between methods qualitative and quantitative. But if you're a real scientist, you're this way or another, you need to get to the truth. That's your job. That's why some people would say political science is a rather not a science. Why politics, politicians, they don't need the truth. They need to get things done. They need people to unite behind them. They don't need truth. They are a bit, their understanding of the society on an ideological basis. Or emotional, if you want. And ima imaginative. Okay? So, when you come to the idea of, again, remembering that you've got hot sciences, okay? That you have natural science, natural social science and humanities. Interesting thing comes. Using tools or using rules. In order to get to the truth, in natural sciences, there is this notion of experiment. You can't do an experiment in the natural sciences. Hey, if I drop the pad, I'll drop it to the floor. Are you sure? Huh? If I just, because I hold, I hold the pen. But if I skip, if I put my fingers somewhere here, and you see, I need other fingers here. Will it drop? <coughs> Why? How do you know? It's a come true. How do you know? Law of physics. How do you know? You, you were taught, you were told in secondary school that the basic, you were taught. This is the law, so after a bunch of experiments, this is the law. But maybe in 2000 years, when you take your fingers and it will continue to be, how do you know? Natural science says, no, it's already the law. And it's the law, it's the law. Вечный двигатель невозможно. It's the law. How do you know? Maybe in 2000, no, this is the law. How about other laws that were, yeah, that's the law. But my point is not, not, really, not, not really about the laws. My point about experiments. How about experiments in social sciences? Eh? If I hurt her really hard, how he will react? Can we make an experiment? She'll cry. How do you know? Maybe she hits me back. And I will cry. <laughs> and she will smile. Ah. 
So, how about experiment? <coughs> not culturally okay. The point is, not culturally okay. In different cultures, if I were, say, 2,000 years ago, or if she's my slave, why not? <laughs> again, again, not culturally okay. But this way or another, okay, so in different cultures, you might have an experiment. But if the experiment consists of 200 people, or it, if the experiment consists of people who are, uh, I don't know, not necessarily in Leningrad here, they are somewhere overseas again, how can I make this experiment? How can I organize it? Huh? Almost impossible. So, on the one hand, mid 19th century, sociology is a science. And it has to be like the science developed back in the 17th, 18th century mechanics, mathematics, which is really not <coughs> physics, chemistry. Skip mathematics a little bit, but, but at, at, at the time it was also an advantage of uh, natural science. But how about experiment for the social science? That's a lot of question marks. And these questions, you see, it might be sociology of science. People are talking. Different kind of questions. Questions, and you've got methods, and you've got truths, you've got the new science. In our understanding, comparative sociology helps. And here, here I'm coming, I, I, I am a project. It's a little bit uh, about comparative sociology. Now I understand that comparative sociology is a sort of a substitution of, soci of experiment in health sciences. It's a minutive substitute. It's an approach, not necessarily the only one, not necessarily the only truth. Yet we believe that those sociologists who will be based their research on comparative sociology or will do reality of comparative sociology, it will be easier for them to do what natural sciences are doing with experiments. Well, we can smile, but so. So, once again, my objective is to come here to an understanding of what comparative sociology as a term, as a notion, is I try to, summarizing what has been told back, last month, last Monday, try to make it a couple of new postulates. Sociology, uh, say, science deals with questions, methods, truth, natural sciences with experiments, and social sciences are difficult. Maybe comparative sociology is a project to this. Specifically to, also you will say, which is to, to cut this, <coughs> or to bridge this, rather, to bridge the division between qualitative and quantitative. Let me have spirit here, and then your concerns and questions.
Questions? So, tell me, please, 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 if someone is telling me the truth, is it clear? Not necessarily in, in English. Maybe you don't understand all the words I'm using. But, but is it clear? Do you, do you get my idea? What I'm trying to push into you guys? Huh? Um, if I kindly ask you to raise the hands, to raise your hands, those of you who understood more than 50%. Please. Can you can you raise more than fifty? Oh not bad. Not bad. Who who is completely out? Let's let's make it this. Who is completely out? Who who lost me? Okay, good. How about 75 percent? You only raise your hand? 75. Of understanding. Yeah, of understanding. So raise your, your hand. High, high. No, I, I mean not more and more, but high. <laughs> How about one hundred percent? How about one hundred percent? I can't answer. I can raise my hand. I don't understand myself. <laughs> okay, make it ninety five. So seventy five is good. Seventy five is good. So let's. Uh, but I, I, I don't believe that I speak fast, number one. Number two, I'm trying to repeat at least twice the same idea with different words. Yeah. Uh, can we say that... Uh, can we say? Uh, we but, can. Uh, the truth that uh, uh, what we're speaking about uh, is a subjective, subjective. subjective to uh, like a religion. Because some religion people can say that uh, there is no physical, uh, there is no laws by God, by Lord and others. You see this? You see, that's the question. The question is again about sociology of science. Subjectivity, objectivity, or well, rather philosophy of science. Yes, you can. The answer is yes. Why? Once again, I told you. Human beings, human being is not the same thing as an object, it's not the same as a stone, it's not the same as the sun, as wind, it's not an object. It has emotions, or if you want, it has soul, it has something that differs. And people who are saying, and it was bad, the rationality, that's the something that differs. Now, in the 21st century, we are approaching to the situation where uh, automatization or create uh, or design or intellectual design, new abilities for the machines, cognitive science brings to another, to a new version, a new understanding of what human being is. The rationality becomes not only for the human being. I mean, it's not yet. It's not a real rationality, but it's very close. And where is the close? Where is the line? At least debatable. What differs now a human being? So, subjectivity, or consciousness, or rationality, or soul, or emotions, imaginations, sense of humor, sense of humor, that, I believe, sense of humor is one of the very power, powerful, uh, powerful tool that brings people together. The, power of human intercourse really increases when you're on the same line on humor. 
and British, their humor, sense of humor, and sense of humor, I, I don't know, Italian guys, it's a little bit different. But they communicate, they communicate by social intercourse, so social interaction, intercourse is sort of the, 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 the words are still that I'm trying to convince. But anyway, so um, subjectivity, uh, that's something that uh, differs, uh, uh, differentiate human being and definitely you cannot say, because it's not an elephant who makes signs, it's not a wolf who makes signs, it's a human being. He's a scientist. He's a scientist and at the same time he's a human being, at the same time he's a father, at the same time he is the uh, son, at the same time he's a husband or, or, or her, mother, wife, uh, daughter. Different emotional, despite of the fact that that's the pretty legal terms, yet its emotion, emotions prevail in uh, uh, in relations with <coughs> the, the, the everyday life. So the answer is yes, and that brings us to another bunch of questions. That's why you cannot make a final yes for everything. Other question, concerns or questions? Can you please give a short definition of what comparative sociology is? Yes, I will. A second uh, after the break. Okay. Of course. But it will be negative. <laughs> Red. Uh, I have a question about uh, experiments. Uh, you have what? Uh, question about experiments. Go ahead. Uh, I clearly understand a lot that uh, uh, social, you understand clearly. Social, sci that social sciences uh, uh, don't use experiments as a method. Can you give me a sample? Can you give me one example of an experiment in social science? I believe that uh, social sciences use uh, uh, experiments uh, uh, as a method. Okay. As a tool. What? As a tool. Method as a tool. So that's the experiment. No. Experiment means settings. Okay? So you, you need to make a setting. Definitely you can you can have a control group. You can, of course, you can make it a sort of experiment. And sometimes you use that. But it's very heavy. It's very difficult. It's very costly if you want. Okay, if, if, if you want to make it in these terms as well. So, I didn't say anything about uh, humanities without methods, but it doesn't mean that they don't have methods. I mean, ethics is a method in, in humanities as well as philosophy, for example. But it's interpretive over there. The same thing, you know, of course you can do, it depends again, it will depend upon the questions. What kind of questions you've got, or what kind of methods you use in order to have an experiment in, in the framework of a social, of a social, one specific social science of one discipline. Yet, it's not like in physics or chemistry. Right? You're gathering data and you interpret. Okay? You cannot make an experiment normally kill one and then, okay, give, 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 give me her again. It's difficult, right? I've never seen some people say that people can rise again to, from, from the first, but I didn't see it yet. So it's not so, okay, it's not so popular as in the social language and, 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 and natural science. Questions? На русском языке не больше странички, лучше не больше странички. Вот сейчас это вторая групповая работа. Как она была организована, о чем и какой результат. В смысле, дата, фамилия. И вы приходите на экзамен, вы мне в экзамене это и даете эту страничку. То есть у вас будет две или три страницы. Будет на третьей лекции третья групповая работа, три. А своей группы или все остальные? Своей, только ты где участвовал. Ты участвовал в этой группе, я работал в группе номер два, 
которая занималась тем, что групп правая работа была так организована, результат был такой. Да. Тихо. Да. По странице на каждую групповую работу. Не больше. Прошлую. Ты каждая, не мы. Бери слово мы. Я. Ты участвовал в групповой работе прошла? Значит, ты пишем дата, фамилия. Надо вспомнить и написать. Я, я... И это идет как у вас supplementary materials for the, for the exam. I'm sorry. Будет через какие-то групповые работы то, что делается на лекциях, а не на семинарах. То есть вы приходите ко мне вот с этим, вот эти три листика, и ответ на... Э, а, ну там будет на английском, это только на Все. Окей. Okay. I speak English better than that. I like it. That was a good one, wasn't it? Uh, I like also how to criticize. You're asking someone, so the question is supposed to be, when working in a group, have you made a sort of a stress on negative sides of this class? Right? So you're asking not her, she's a presenter, she presents the group. And that's a good point. Okay? Everyone, every course, every human being has bad and good. Don't try to see that a human being is the, is the nicest or is the best. Сколько в человеке хорошего, столько в нем плохого. The point is to, to dwell with the action. Хорош. Right? And to... to Just to, to put it down, all the negative stuff, definitely. But when discussing, you need to find out this as well. Not to skip, not to put it aside. Not to hide. It's nothing. So what if you hide off? Quite an opposite. It will be much better to show, to show and say, okay, here it's better to make it Uh, why don't you make a stress here to make the course better? That's, that's, that's what we're supposed to be. They're talking, they're trying to evaluate or to try to make a comparative analysis of what they've heard. So this is the evaluation group. Okay, so when... And I got... Okay, so the last part is good. I will, I will, I will use text as well, so if you... No. Uh, I don't like to use the text, definitely, for sure. But it doesn't mean that I do not read it. Okay? So I will show you that I read. But more important thing, I don't like the word lecture as well. What I'm trying, I'm trying to reflect. I'm trying to reflect on the points that are really important. And here is the question. The really important question that's supposed to be in the array, in the in the palitra. Palitra. In the number of necessary, mandatory points that a student has to have. So, what are the questions about comparative sociology? What, so, that's, that's what I'm trying to reflect, that's what I'm trying to think about with you. So, frankly, we're just only approaching. It's much easier to just to tell comparative sociology this, to read you that, and get out of it. But what I wanted to understand, I wanted to understand how, where it was the point of departure and where is the point of arrival. And how we, or those who wrote in handbook, came to this arrival, to this conclusion, came to the necessity to have a comparative sociology. Why? It's very simple again. So the class, or this course, is sort of a concluded course for your, uh, for your study, or for your studies in, uh, in the, uh, at some instant. I have to use some, uh, some uh, written form, uh, some written uh, or citation. Uh, International Encyclopedia of the Social Sciences, Macmillan, uh, 88, Free Press.
page two, uh, page 420. The comparative approach or method in sociology, in a sense, covers all sociology. Four, any sociological research necessarily compares some variables with others. But beyond this very general and therefore rather meaningless connotation, the comparative, quote unquote, designate a rather special focus on sociological inquiry. The investigation of the distribution of social phenomena in different societies or types of society or the comparison of such total society or of major institutional spheres. Once again, the comparative approach or method in sociology, in a sense, covers all sociology. That's International Encyclopedia for the Social Science. Macmillan, uh, Macmillan couple in the Free Press, uh, page 24, in Methodological Problem of the Social Science. The construction of types for purposes of comparative analysis poses several methodological problems. First is the problem of selecting the units of comparison in terms of which the variables can be meaningfully applied. Total societies, institutions, groups, or cultural tracts. And the question of the range of the time of which such units can be viewed as homogeneous. Second is the problem of construction of indices which the variables can be compared Indices of cultural orientation, social complexity, or organizational structure. Third is the problem of comparability. A fourth basic problem to most comparative risk studies, especially to those focusing on institutional and organizational variables, is the problem of sampling. I, I understand it's a little bit difficult to hear. Uh, a little bit difficult to hear and to read also as well. And to, but what is the stress here? The rough uh, understandings of in the literature, in the encyclopedias, that comparative sociology means sociology. So you don't need to use comparative. Why? Because any kind, any sociology is comparative, is already comparative. You don't need to use a word comparative to designate. There is another word uh, or citation. It's in Charles Ryan, the comparative method, moving beyond qualitative and quantitative strategies. It's uh, 1987, uh, 1987, page number one. It's not his words, it's, uh, it's uh, Gis Swanson's words. Thinking without comparison is unthinkable. And in absence of comparison, so is all scientific thought and scientific research. It's, this is this words. Uh, Blackwell Dictionary of Modern Social Thought, 2003. It's comparative sociology. This is the in in the Blackwell <coughs> Dictionary of Modern Thought. The word comparative sociology. Uh, the entry. The adjective comparative has been used to create a subfield in almost all the social sciences or closely allied fields, anthropology, history, law, linguistics, politics, 
Yet it, ha yet it has always played a minor role within the organization of knowledge. One has to wonder why. There is one simple reason that seems on reflection obvious. All social research necessarily involves a comparison among cases of some variables, either explicitly or implicitly. Hence, all social research is by definition comparative. Gay. Black Hole Dictionary of Modern Social Swap, 2003. Uh, in the handbook, you'll find citation, and we'll start with the Duhamel idea. That the Duhamel himself was the first one, the father of, uh, and the first professor actually, who has a chair, a coffee of sociology. And he said, sociology, if it wants to stay along with science, has to be comparative. Okay? So that's the point when we start to reflect, that we start to think then we start to present in the handbook what is comparative sociology. And it looks like we've got a problem. We've got two kinds of problems. Number one, we don't know what is sociology in per se. And we have different understanding of what is comparative. So, the first approach that we started with, dealing with, we started with negative definitions, mainly saying what social, what comparative sociology is not. Чем сравнительная социология не является? Not what it is, but what it is not. Why? To make it easier to develop our own understanding and to present it to the public and to present it to the students who will read this. So, pointing out that in classical tradition, comparative sociology and agreeing with Emil Durkheim, we still make a point that comparative sociology is not a comparative method. Is anybody has this the handbook? Do you have what is that? Can you find out? Where is Do you remember where is this? We're saying. The quotation. Yeah, this, not, not the quotation, but the negative definition somewhere. Mm -hmm. is. Uh, so I want to. I want to stick to the text. Uh, so once again, if you want, uh, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Я прочту это по-русски. А, вот здесь в заключении, да. Ну, в введении тоже там. Да, где? Я как раз это думал, в введении где-то. Где-то в введении. Ну, хорошо. Значит, в заключении, подводя итоги, здесь зайдется три вопроса. Является ли сравнительная социология самостоятельной субдисциплиной? Нет. Сравнительная социология не есть самостоятельная. А, где, где здесь метод? Я просто думаю. Метод следующий. А, а да. Тождественна ли сравнительная социология сравнительному методу? Нет. We 
you want to define that so comparative sociology doesn't uh, amount to Niravnyaitsa doesn't amount to to comparative math. Comparative sociology does not amount to a specific subdiscipline like say comparative political science. In political sciences, comparative political science it's subdiscipline very close to this situation in sociological knowledge is comparative macro sociology. This way or another you can, and not only you, one can. One can say, and there is a logic of naming comparative macro sociology as a sort of a sub-discipline. But in totality, you cannot say that, in my understanding, and in our understanding, and what we are trying to develop, we are trying to develop a third, third way. We agree and we acknowledge that comparative macro-historical macro sociology might be, it's very close, yet in totality of sociological knowledge nowadays, you cannot say that comparative sociology is a subdiscipline as like sociology of youth or sociology of labor or sociology of uh, communications. It's not a sub. Why? Because in potential, every sociological research supposed to be, supposed, has to make a comparison either in the situation when it goes for substituting an experiment or as well as uh, having the qualitative and quantitative. Of course, we also understand and we also believe that quantitative and qualitative, that this is the absolute, this is already, it's all stuff. We have to make, we have to bridge you cannot do only qualitative or only quantitative. And the comparative sociology shows you that it's almost impossible. Comparative sociology for us, it's a new way of doing, organizing, designing sociological research, which consists of several traits, characteristics. One, we say comparative sociology is an ideal type of sociological research. So, in terms of, this is the ideal. Sociological research potentially comparative, but no one, and, but, but sociologists are using comparison instinctively or uninstinctively or uh, in sort of underneath they do not do it um, rationally if you want but being or constituting sociological research on Duhan, Weber and Marx of course, this is the fundamentals. This is the foundation for doing sociological research. And all of them, they were comparative sociologists. So, Karl Marx, Max Weber, Emil Duhan, he said himself, comparative sociology it has to do with comparison. If you accept their sociological views, one has to be, one has to make comparison. So, Sociological research in potential comparative. This is the ideal time. Number two, comparative sociology is a process. You cannot say that today we had comparative, we did comparative research. Tomorrow we will do another one. Not, not comparative, we will do something else. Uncomparative. Non-comparative. Comparative research, you cannot finish. Fact of the matter, you cannot finish research at all.
But in the signs, one question leads you to another one. So you've got, so it's a process. Meaning one question brings to answers, an answer is a fu as foundation for another question. So, the outcome, a result of one comparison, brings you to another comparison. You cannot stop. And then we said that the uh, critique, so comparative sociology is something that brings sociologists to understanding, to criticize, to make sure you cannot stop. Comparative sociologist is someone who is uh, sort of not taking everything for granted. He's trying to realize those two processes for sure. He's he, him, tries to criticize. Not criticize, not to say you're stupid. I'm a more charismatic, and I know this language where I use it better than you guys. It's trying to make out the final destination of the comparative research, of comparative sociological research, of sociological studies in general. Okay, so this is the this is the ideas that we defined. Based on these ideas, we defined not negative but positive understanding of comparative sociology in general. So what we've got, uh, and I missed it. I had to. I had to start with first, but it's worth mentioning for sure. So when you've got comparison, what you've got? You've got logical procedure. You've got rational. You've got rationality. You've got thinking. You cannot do anything in rational form without comparing. Then you've got like comparative method. And again, do you remember this? Comparative means finding similarities and differences. How I am similar to her, I'm different. How my product is similar, how it's different. How this building is similar, how it's different. It's very simple. You don't need to make something grandiose. So, when you say, <coughs> Similarities and differences in methods to remember means instrument or rules. Right? Then you've got comparative research. Then you've got Comparative sociological research. And only after this you can come to comparative sociology. So this is the line of argument that we developed in the handbook. And this is the line of argument that we are trying to convince, and we, have, we did it, and we divided the handbook into two parts. 
two major parts. One is theoretical and methodological. Another one is rather methodical. Theoretical and methodological tries to convince, or tries to make sure that here and what I've said before makes us or brings us to the understanding of those three stuff like ideal type, process, and critique. Critique. So what we are trying, what we are trying, we are trying the first part. Definitely, and uh, two words, two words the most. In the first part, our one of our conclusion or our one of our results in discussing is that. Patriarchs or uh, founding fathers of sociology, Weber, Marx, Duhain, are the founding fathers of comparative sociology, of comparative sociological research. And they are trying to do their books develop their book, their theoretical traditions on rational comparison thing, comparative thing. So, you do not have, like, you've got Marx Weber on Duhain, founding fathers of sociology, and you've got a number of other founding fathers for comparative sociology. No. Quite an opposite. What they did and here is another word, very important, but that will be in our, uh, in our MA and then PhD classes. They did it comparative historic. Comparative historic. I'm not talking, so in here, what I want you to understand, I'm not talking cross-cultural, cross-national. What I'm talking here is comparative with stress on both words comparative and sociology comparative sociology is an ideal type and process and critical approach of organizing sociological research in current state of affairs that sociology came to That's very important. Once again, you can read, you can find out in handbooks, in the literature, that comparative sociology is a comparative method. Okay. You can find that comparative sociology is a subdiscipline like sociology of youth, sociology of labor, like economic sociology. Okay, you make arguments, you can. You can find our way of understanding that we develop comparative sociology today is building apart not further analysis if you'd like to, but synthesis. We don't need to make only and to produce we or those who call themselves sociologists, they, their destiny is not only to produce new, more and more data, but to do something with this data. Not only, okay, this, that's my data, get out of it. I don't need to do anything else. To get data, it's only one thing. So what? If the more important thing is to synthesize to bring together and to make sure that you put and find some similarities and differences with other researchers, with other approaches, with other theoretical and methodological orientations. 
That's number two or one. So three ideas how we understand comparative sociology that patriarchs of sociology are not uh, only patriarchs of sociology but, patriarchs, but, but founding fathers of comparative sociology. And the third is I also already said that they're trying to make sure that comparative sociology has two different understandings. Comparative sociology is an inquiry as a, soci as a sociological research, as something that sociologists do during their field work. Not necessarily the field, it might be desk, desk research as well. And, socio and comparative sociology is schooling. As a teaching discipline. As something that we are doing right here, right now. We are not doing comparative sociology, sociological research. Even the group work that I kind of asked to do, suppose, to do, and I, you are completely the same, you did the same thing that has been done last month. At the very end, I would like, and if you have, and I believe you have, the group work trying to make a comparative analysis 